Thank you for joining us for worship this morning. I'm Chris Matthews, pastor here at Whiting United Methodist Church. We're meeting here online today from my living room. And so thanks for joining us where, wherever you are, from your bed or your car or your home. I'm glad that you're here and that you're taking this time to center, to focus, to give praise and thanks to God. Just a couple of announcements. This next Sunday on November 22nd, um, I will be participating in uh, a Whiting Intercommunity Interdenominational uh, Thanksgiving Prayer Service. That's at 2 o'clock at Sacred Heart Church. Uh, several different pastors will be sharing together. I will be bringing the sermon, the message for the, for the afternoon service. As we bless families on Thanksgiving, you're welcome to join us. Uh, there uh, in your in physical uh, presence for worship or I plan to also have it available online um, I haven't heard yet if they're uh, if they're still planning to hold the worship service but as, as far as I know it's still on for now um, I just wanted to let you know uh, just give you an update oh there goes my cat uh, give you an update on uh, us not being open on Sunday mornings for public worship According to our district superintendent, our bishop, the Lake County and Porter Health County or health, health uh, departments, that uh, with rising COVID rates, that now is just not a, a good time for us to open. We're still at this orange level where we can have, uh, we're able to open for small things, for uh, church business, for, uh, for meetings and groups, but. Uh, at this point not for public worship and if we end up going through the red phase um, we'll, we'll shut down uh, for a while um, we're continuing to monitor those numbers and uh, I'll, I'll keep you in contact but it for the time being it looks like it's probably going to be at least a month or so before we're back together in person so but in that time God is still God that God of love connecting us guiding us, growing us, calling us to follow. And that's why we gather this morning. So will you join me together as we sing this old hymn, Come Thou Fount of Every Blessing. Oh, 
these words from Psalm 90 from the message. God, it seems you have been our home forever. Long before the mountains were born, long before you brought earth itself to birth. From once upon a time to kingdom come, you are God. So don't return us to mud saying, back to where you came from, patience. You've got all the time in the world, whether a thousand years or a day, and it's the same to you. Are we no more to you than a wispy dream, no more than a blade of grass that springs up gloriously with the rising sun and is cut down without a second thought? Your anger is far and away too much for us. We're at the end of our rope. You keep track of all our sins. Every misdeed since we were children is entered into your books. All we can remember is that frown on your face. Is that all we're ever going to get? We lived for 70 years or so. With luck, we might make it to 80. And what do we have to show for it? Trouble. Toil and trouble and... A marker in the graveyard. Who can make sense of such rage? Such anger against the very ones who fear you. Oh, teach us to live well. Teach us to live wisely and well. Come back, God. How long do we have to wait and treat your servants with kindness for a change? Surprise us with love at daybreak. Then we'll skip and dance all day long. Make up for the bad times with some good times. You've seen enough evil to last a lifetime. Let your servant see what you're best at, the ways you rule and bless your children. Let the loveliness of our Lord, our God, rest on us, confirming the work that we do. Oh yes, affirm the work that we do. God calls us in this psalm, the psalmist is saying, let us count our days. God who is at home with us forever throughout all generations, yet we are mortals. Just here for a time, 70 or 80 years. So how do we make the most of it? How do we live out that love? Live out that life. This morning as we begin to pray, I invite you to just invite God's Holy Spirit to be with us. To focus. To listen to how God may be speaking to you today. We'll do a short song. I'll give you some time for some silent prayer, where you can lift your own needs and concerns to God. I'll lead us in the pastoral prayer, and together I invite you to pray the Lord's Prayer.
invite you into a time of silent prayer. O oh, holy God, we gather in your name this morning from many different places. Bind us together in one mind. Bind us together in one spirit. Reveal your love to us wherever you are this morning, wherever we are. Take us from those moments in our lives where we may be fe feeling frustrated or hurt or lonely. Where we may feel that no one quite understands. But God, you understand. To move us into the places you've called us to be. Holy Spirit, wrap us in your love. Wrap us in your goodness and your grace. Comfort those of us who need to hear your voice, who need your touch this morning. We pray for healing for those who are sick or in the hospital, God, guide the hands of their caregivers, of their doctors. Let them know they are not alone. For those struggling with COVID-19 and their families and people dealing with quarantine, hospitalizations, and for some planning funerals, and they don't know the date. pray for your mercy. We pray for your comfort. We pray for your peace in their lives that passes all understanding. Now oh God, we know that as your church, our first role is to do no harm. So God, help us to do no harm. Help us to take practices and precautions that are safe, that are loving. Help us to reach out and to care for our brothers and our sisters, our neighbors. Our world seems so divided. God, everywhere we look. But you, you have called your creation to repentance. You have here called your creation to come together to shout and sing with joy and dance together. And so we pray that we will be people of peace. We know that you are in control. We know that your hand guides. Help us to respond to the hurt in the world with love, by loving our neighbors, by loving our enemies, by going into uncomfortable places and saying things that may be uncomfortable but are right and good and just and of you. So give us the strength O oh God, to carry on. Give us the strength with your spirit to show the love that you have called us to give. The peace you've called us to bring on earth as it is in heaven. So now we pray the prayer Jesus has taught his disciples. 
Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. For those of you who tuned in last week, we, we had a pre-recorded service from our church leadership from around the state, and I appreciate, uh, I appreciate uh, Bishop Trimble and the cabinet leading in that and uh, allowing for me to have a Sunday of rest. And, uh, but I, it seems it's been a long time since we've, we've been together live for worship. And what a Sunday to take off. I'm not sure what I might have said. <laughs> and and as I look at the world and what's going on and how our election and politics have become so polarized, how wearing a mask for safety has become political. Since we've last met, COVID rates have gone up around the state and around the country. Since we last met, we've had an election and we thought we knew a winner or we think we know the winner. And some news sites say some things and some news says other things. I turned on the TV yesterday and people were marching in Washington. And when I turned off the TV, it was okay. When I woke up this morning, I woke up to news of violence breaking out in our nation's capital last night. And so I'm glad I had last Sunday off. got to think about what are you going to say? How does a Christian respond? And as I've been thinking about how to begin to address these issues in some times past, uh, this might be a time for a message and call about justice and standing up for the marginalized and stomping out the injustices that hurt, that bring about division, that bring about hate in the world. This might be a time for a message about healing a divided nation, divided neighborhoods, not necessarily north and south, but even on our own blocks, even within our own families, as some of us get ready to gather for Thanksgiving meals, what will the conversation be? Or will there even be a Thanksgiving meal this year? Could have done a message on healing. I could have done a message on the founding pr principles of our country as a deism, as a deist country and our founding fathers how they saw God as a rock, a foundation that this country was to be something special and in that remembering our veterans as we do and we pray for them and have this week all of those ideas and have gone through my head and so many conversations more. So much is going on in the world and we're not sure what, what, what to do. How do we respond? For some of us, we want to fight. For some of us, we want to yell. For some of us, we want to crawl in our beds. For some of us, we just want to have Thanksgiving dinner. Our scripture passage this morning comes from the book of First Thessalonians. The Paul's letter. 
And this was a letter written to a church 2,000 years ago. It would have probably happened written about 30 to 50 years after Jesus died. And Paul had helped start this new Christian community. Remember, nobody, the word Christian probably uh, was not at all a common term used. These were very small communities. Christians were persecuted. They were going against the rule of what they were supposed to believe in their religion in, in Rome. And these first Christians were made fun of. Some of them were killed. Some of them were stoned. Some of them were crucified for this cause, this movement, for this radical, different way of life. And Paul is writing to them, and in chapter 5, he says these words. Now, brothers, about times and dates, we do not need to write to you, for you know very well that in the day that the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night. While people are saying peace and safety, destruction will come on them suddenly as labor pains on a pregnant woman, and they will not escape. But you, as brothers, are not in darkness, so that this day should surprise you like a thief. You are all sons of the light and sons of the day. We do not belong to the night or the darkness. So then, let us not be like others who are asleep. Let us be alert and self-controlled. For those who sleep, sleep at night. And those who get drunk, get drunk at night. But since we belong to the day, let us be self-controlled, putting on faith and love as a breastplate, and the hope of salvation as a helmet. For God did not appoint us to suffer wrath, but to receive salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ. He died for us so that whether we are awake or asleep, we may live together with him. Therefore, encourage one another, build each other up, just as in fact you are doing. This first church in Thessalonica, these, this first letter that Paul had written, this was his earliest letter that, that we have in the New Testament. And Paul was writing to this community as it was just forming, just beginning to figure out what its practices, its exercises would be, just beginning to figure out how to break the bread and share the wine and be in a meal together and Christ being present. This is one of those early communities that's learning what it means to serve together, learning what it means to forgive one another, learning what it means to sacrifice, to give of their money, their time, and their energy for the cause of Christ. To live a radically different way, a way, as Paul says, in the daytime, sober. Not as those in the dark, but the light. And in this culture, in this community, there were so many pagan gods. There were so much different types of worship going on and people doing their own thing, destruction happening. And here's Paul is reminding, reminding his people, reminding this beloved community, don't get caught up in all that stuff. All that ways of the dark world, all, everything going on outside there, that kingdom, that reign, that Caesar, all that mess, don't worry about it. 
Don't let it control you. Don't let it have fear over you. Don't let it empower you. Because you're not children of the darkness. You're children of the light. Remind us. You are sons of the light. Sons of the day. We don't belong to that night. We don't belong to all those problems. And I think he's encouraging those early church leaders, that early community and society, to remain focused, to remain strong in their faith, to remain in love, grounded in Jesus, his life, his death, his resurrection. To not get caught up in the politics of the day, the drama of the day, the arguing, the fighting of the day, even the pleasures of the day. And as that psalmist reminded us in Psalm 90, we only have 70, 80 days, but God's reign, God's love is forever. So we need to count those days. And how are we counting our days? How are we living out our life? How are we loving God and loving our neighbor every day? So as I thought about all of the different ideas and things going on in the world and all of the topics I could have talked about this morning, we're reminded that the world's arguments, our nation's division, yes, it matters. We're part of that. We are engaged citizens. But our kingdom is not of this world. It never was, and it never has been. We live in the kingdom of heaven. And, and as children of God, as children of love, of, of Jesus, as followers of the way, we are not to conform to this world. We are not to be driven by the arguments and mistruths of the world. Now you might be saying, Chris, but we live in reality. I woke up this morning to news of violence in Washington. I woke up to another shooting in Chicago. I woke up and I'm not sure if I'm going to be employed too much longer, you might say. And those are all real problems. And these are all real issues and this is part of our reality. But we don't come at the issues of the day from the perspective of the world. We come to the issues of the day through the eyes of Christ, through the eyes of love, through the eyes of forgiveness, through the eyes of surrender. So this week, as emotions and feelings are going all over the place as a roller coaster of news seems to be pumped out. First, to do no harm. Remember, you are children, we are all children of the light. Not part of darkness, not part of that world. God will take care of that. But Jesus is coming like this thief in the night. And so we need to be prepared. When we encounter the world, we encounter situations. It's not about us having to be right or our positions having to get heard. But it's about in these tough situations in the world, how are we serving in the midst of a storm.
when our neighbors are lashing out, how do we love them anyway? When our kids and teachers are struggling with school, how do we walk alongside to serve? When our spouse or loved one has just said something ridiculous and we can't handle it, how do we respond as children of the living God in forgiveness? Let me remind you from verse 9. For God did not appoint us to suffer wrath, but to receive salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ. He died for us that whether we are awake or asleep, we may live together with him. So therefore, encourage one another. Build each other up just, in fact, as you've been doing. No matter what's going on in the world, my friends, love one another. Encourage one another. Build each other up. For that's what we've been doing. As we close this morning, I just want to spend a little time and give us some time to to check in. How are we doing? So just take a couple breaths. You might want to get in a comfortable spot. Close your eyes. Just think over your last week. Where have you seen God's love working in the world? Give God thanks. This week, how have you shown Christ's love to someone in your life. Give thanks. This week, Where is it? Who is it that you might need to forgive? What's holding you back? And now just spend a moment. John Wesley's question to us all. How is it with your soul?
friends, thanks again for joining us for worship this week. Find a place to love, to serve this week. Find a way to be in relationship with your neighbors. Don't get frustrated by all the stuff in the world, because it's just stuff. We are children of God, and we live in light. In God's light, in Christ's light. Thank you for serving. Thank you for loving. Thank you for continuously giving generously to your church. Today and every day, walk and live in the light of Christ. Go in peace and go with God. Amen.